you were talking about um, sugars and stuff like that and being fat and um, I was curious if you um, if you were just talking in general or if you get eating disorders within the statement you gave. What do you mean by get eating disorders into the statement I made? What do you mean by that? Um, you said you can't overeat on not... Uh, oh, the... yeah, I was just saying, I think that like if you're eating like healthier food, it's really, really, really hard to overeat. I think it becomes way harder. Um... Um, I would not say that. <laughs> In terms of eating disorders, I wouldn't say that. Um, sure. I mean, and there also might be some people that only need a thousand calories a day because they're missing their legs. I mean, I'm sure there are going to be exceptions, but in general, yeah. like less processed food is going to be way more satiating. Um, it's not broken down and converted to glucose as quickly. Um, it doesn't cause like the leptin and all the other hormones to release as hardcore to like make you feel hungry. Like you're going to be a lot more full eating one chicken breast than you are going to be eating one croissant. But at the end of the day, there's about the same amount of calories in both, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I mean. So you were talking in general, not uh, getting into all this. Yeah, I'm usually talking in general. I'm not accounting for every single situation that could possibly happen. Like, there's always going to be some exceptions. People have metabolic syndrome. People have thyroid problems. People have other appetite-related issues. Like, I mean, things can happen, of course. But yeah, and you never had like any problems with eating or food or anything. Um, I think it was more an ADHD thing, if I had to guess. But yeah, I was a very, very, very big under eater uh, growing up. You never had like an unhealthy uh, thought about food, I guess. I mean, I didn't like eating. <laughs> I hated eating. That's okay. That's unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was. I was. Yeah. Till I was around twenty. I was. I was the the abs uh, opposite of that. Like I never had a. Um, I had to train myself to know when I'm full. I always overeat. Sure. Um, yeah, no, that was my question. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Have fun. Wait, how am I missing a thing here? LOL, a chicken breast is Destiny's example of healthy food. What's wrong with a chicken breast? It's just a fuck ton of protein. It's relatively lean. There's not any added bullshit. What's wrong with a chicken breast? I don't understand how people in chat can, like, find, like, you can take opposition. Oh, I know why there's another thing. With like the dumbest, most non-controversial statements in the world. Like, how can you shut a, if there's a chicken breast? Do you, when I say chicken breast, do you think I'm talking about like a fucking KFC, like deep fried, like, th like thrice fried, triple battered, Oreo covered, hot sauce dip, like. Just go. You're right, but red meat tastes better than chicken. It's more filling, but it's a lot worse for you to eat a ton of red meat. Non-processed breads and carbs can also be very fattening. Um, the lo the less processed ones are. Um, yeah, beef is tastes way better, but beef has other problems. It's probably, I think it's carcinogenic. <laughs> I don't think that's debated at this point, but it tastes really good. Mm. Are you going to talk now, or are you just going to sit here in silence like a fucking loser? <gasps> You're fucking talking. You want me to just interrupt you next time? Yeah. What's up? What do you want? Oh, I'll do that. Um... I wanted to talk to you about how you sort of square your 2023 resolution of being more confrontational or okay. more like extracting concessions okay. with still trying to get through to people. Okay. But I think your two conversations this year, it seemed to me like you, you made some assumptions and sort of went on like mini rants in some places where basically like Sneeko or Pearl looked at you and was just like, I didn't say that at all. Like you sort of just argued off in another direction. Wow, true. <laughs> so like with Pearl, the specific thing you did. Yeah, I had a on, big problem with Pearl. I, I fucked up on Pearl Hardcore, but I believe it now afterwards. Um, she's gonna be here for a month and I don't wanna, I feel like I'm nuking like content with her um, by saying anything, I feel bad. I mean, I'm just being honest. Well, no, I mean, she said it herself, so whatever. I thought that Pearl was like a super master grifter, hardcore, like hiding her beliefs and all that shit. And instead, I just think she's really, yeah, uh, actually, yeah. Uh, that's what I'll say. So that's not what I'm talking about, though. Okay. What I'm actually talking about in this case is um, you were t discussing a tape with her and Adam and Alex. And what happened was like you were kind of getting frustrated 
and you went off in this direction of talking about the spiritual void and about how like he's anti like what Christian conservatives stand up for mm -hmm. and like you kind of went on a rant for about 10 seconds and at some point she looked at you and just went where did you get that I was conservative or Christian oh sure right? yeah I have to like um, my issue for that is when I talk to some of these people I need to find quotes and shit of stuff they've said yeah so because I'm pretty sure I've heard her on podcast sure, talk yeah. about like traditional values and things um I feel like I've heard her talk about that before, but I, but I didn't have any clips handy. And every time I'm in front of these people, all of a sudden they become the most reasonable, moderate people in the fucking world. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So that was sort of was going to be my next point it was in 2022. You when you're trying to be conciliatory, you managed to never step on this mind because you never ascribed values to people that they weren't basically like ready to espouse in the moment. Usually, yeah, but I just I have to find a better a way of navigating that because it's very frustrating because when I'm around people, they all get so goddamn reasonable. That's really fucking frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, do you think I was just thinking in that case, it, and I have no idea how to navigate this in the moment because obviously having these conversations live is super difficult. But in that case, if you've just been like, are you Christian? Do you Are you spiritual? Are you religious? If you, like, led with that before the rant, then she couldn't have gone... Oh, well, where would you get that? Because I, I also get the same impression that like you're kind of saying something that you know we all feel like we know that, and so it's like effective for your audience, but for her audience it wouldn't be effective because they just go, "Ha, huh, yeah, she's not really that Christian." Um, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I, yeah, um, asking questions first is probably important. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I know you know that, so it's more because I, I literally learned that like from watching your content. It's like don't don't go off on somebody unless they're like willing to defend that point in the moment, right? Yeah, like, I know. It's, what they the believe. red pill people are just really frustrating because these guys, they unironically do the shit that um that people think that Fuentes was doing, and that these guys hide their like beliefs like so well when I'm there, and it's very 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 frustrating. Yeah, I don't understand like the cowardice in that. Like just, just personally, oh. like I don't get it. Like if you're a this should have been like on their part, right? I just don't get it. Um, well, yeah, could, like, I think it's because they know a lot of their beliefs are a little bit wild, but But yeah, yeah. it's really frustrating because so like I'll see because when I'm watching like the fresh and fit like stream for instance um, They are um, Yeah, they're like damn where is this energy when I'm on the show like this would be some really interesting stuff to go over um, But then but they never seem to want to bring that up. Yeah, it's really an annoying yeah, and I wonder how much of that is just your reputation as well as like a debater. Basically, like I get the impression sometimes that if you ask a question to somebody, they will sometimes reflexively give you the opposite answer of what they actually think. Yeah, because they know because that just like, me's gonna hang me. Yeah, that's a problem yeah. too. That like if I were to ask like let's say just pearly things had this is why i said i really need quotes and not questions. Let's say that just pearly things had said a million times like yeah, we need to go back to Christian values and blah 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 blah. If we're sitting there and I ask her a question like are you Christian or do you believe in Christian values? I think that just hearing a question from me, like especially if I'm in like debate mode, people like want to reflect. We say like, no, um, Christianity, mm, no, no, I wouldn't say so. No, like they're gonna say no no matter what because they feel like they know that I'm asking a certain question to set them up for a dunk, so they'll just like avoid like the actual answer. I think. Yeah, and so I think, kind of like the overall thought I've been having with this is like. In 2022 with the conciliatory tone you sort of got people to bring down the shields in that way and like you could have better conversations yeah but, but the problem i was running into was fulfilling for your overall goal yeah the problem was that right? i was having quote unquote good conversation that they would like listen to me but i wasn't really saying what i really wanted to say that was the issue like i, I think i'm coming off at the end of the day like a friendly guy I was like oh like destiny's really chill because he understands like why i think are evil and while they'll turn you into like lizard people and stuff and it's like well what i really want is to push you on that belief but i'm not doing very much pushing sometimes so i want to push people a lot harder yeah so like how do we come up with a system for like being able to push without i don't know if you'll ever be able to do it without putting people on the on the defensive mm -hmm. but like if, yeah, if you have quotes or if you can ask these questions before leading in um i feel like that helps but it's yeah it's really like because i think there should be a way to to keep the positives of 2022 where you're like having these these conversations with people and you're you're either changing minds or you're not just like shutting people's brains off before they'll listen to you, you should be able to retain that while still getting your points across and i like i 
I can't think of how to do it. I just it's what well, yeah, sure. I mean, it's all like a work in progress. Like it's all practice. Like I'll do. Yeah, no, it's it's like super hard. Um, but I think that like it's kind of critical. I don't know. Was curious if you thought about it or if you'd gone back and watched. Yeah, of course. Because the, the Stars cast or no, I mean Sneko's the the yeah the conversation with Sneko and just probably thinks it was way too confrontational. Like I agree with that. It was too confrontational. Um, but like it's not good enough to go on and just be like oh like don't you think this is whatever? And they're like yeah. And then as soon as they go back to their audience, they're like oh yeah, the opposite, the opposite, the opposite, the opposite, the opposite. Like that's not acceptable anymore. I can't do that anymore. It's driving me fucking crazy. So it's just finding some balance between the two. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, I was curious about that. Um, do I just uh, do I just send you like a PayPal address or something for for building all your content yesterday? Hello, hello. What do you want, Gabe? Hello, hello. Hello. Hey, dude. I uh, just wanted to come in and uh, just call out Rage Pope for saying some pretty dumbass brain dead shit uh, last night. Okay. So, uh, how do you feel about Mexico giving into the cartels after they? captured uh guzman and they basically assaulted a city and killed like 30 40 50 people that's wild is that indeed what happened and what do you think is the correct way forward mr pope um i think mexico is more or less a failed state now the same way that somalia is really do you think do you think that it's, it's do you think like it's a 10, failed state in the same way that somalia is there are no stable cities left in Mexico. Are there parts of the country, like large parts, that have trouble getting like food, I water, guess power? This is the beginning. But okay, the beginning I, yeah, of the failed I think state. It's okay, pretty bad. Yeah, is Ford like losing operations to the cartels? Have like, do we still have like huge? I, I think specifically, there's safe areas that they've carved out so that it doesn't come to that. Well, I mean, my question was, what is the correct? What do you think the correct way forward is, Rage Pub? Like. If this is the I case mean, in our neighbor, one of our most important borders is like a failed state. Like, what should we do about that? I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like you have to just put more pressure on them to allow us to conduct more operations over there and to do things that are more significant and then offer them aid on our side and offer them more, you know, protection for the uh, guns and stuff that we're smuggling over them, over to them. That's causing a lot of the issues. Like, I think it's just absolutely unsustainable that we're continuing to fund a lot of those operations through the purchase of narcotics and that we're just willing to just let it go because it's not within our borders. So do you think there needs to be like a revival in the war on drugs, that sort of thing, or? Uh, probably, or just legalization and production within our own borders to get rid of the trafficking. Put the cartels out of business. Yeah. So yeah, uh, he pretty confidently said that uh, they had catched and released El Chapo's son again. Mm -hmm. That's just a bold-faced lie. That's just not true. They just captured it again. Mm -hmm. They didn't release him. And also just to mention that the comparison to Somalia is just absolute fucking dumb. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, Mexico might be like a failed state, like some small rural rural parts like very disconnected from everything mm -hmm. where there's it's easier for the cartels to have access to the population and run rampant but uh yeah no it's not even close to somalia that's also pretty fucking dumb okay. and uh also mentioning that the cartels uh rival the mexican armed forces capabilities is also really fucking stupid uh, they do have a lot of firepower, but they don't have like the same training. So like, for uh, I think the average is that for every military member of the Mexican army that dies in a in combat with the cartels, it's usually about ten uh, ten members from the cartels die because they don't really have the training. Uh, the police is another uh, uh, story. However, the police are completely fucking uh, overrun by the cartels. That's very different. But yeah. Uh, it's just a lot of shit was said very confidently, and I just wanted to clear that clear that up. Wow. Okay. All right. Sorry, that was it. Okay. Uh, Have fun. I'm Love you, buddy. Up. Love you, buddy. Have a good time. Bye bye. Snapple monkey, you're in. What's up? Hey, Destiny. Hey. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. 
Uh, so usually I come in here, I ask a quick little question. Uh, it lasts like two minutes and then you kick me out or I just leave. But today, uh, I'm a bit triggered. Not by you, <laughs> but by things that were said like last week uh, during your stream. Okay. Because uh, I'm... Um, I'm a, I'm not a teacher currently, but I did uh, have a bachelor's, uh, or I do have a bachelor's degree in uh, uh, how you say it, Pe pedag pedag pedagogy, pedagogy or something, or pedagogy yeah, yeah, or, sure. yeah. Uh, and <laughs> first of all, when I heard you're, you you on the podcast with that homeschooling uh, woman, mm -hmm. uh, that triggered me. But that's fine. I, I kind of expect that from some people. But then Cherry. Uh, came on your stream and started talking about the 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 girl that was humiliated, uh, the uh, autistic girl that was humiliated in her school because of her uh, hygiene issues, mm -hmm. and immediately went on to say that the parent was bad and uh, that shouldn't happen and it's child abuse and stuff like that. And I I very disagree with that, uh, depending on the situation, obviously, but. Because uh, it's like corporal pu uh, corporal punishment uh, for parents. Like it can work because you, you hear people say, "Yeah, I was beat as a kid, but I, I turned out fine." But that's um, that's usually because of how the parents uh, manage the situation after the beating. Uh, but you can discipline without beating just just as well, which is why people discourage doing it anyway. But it's it's all about how you treat the situation afterwards. So, for example, if she was humiliated at the um, at the school and then the, uh, she comes home and the mother mother explains hey I know you're feeling bad right now uh, but this will pass and uh, I hope you remember that you should keep yourself clean and, and explain wh why uh, like explain that she did something wrong or that she uh, how to say this I like just explain that uh, if the you don't situation clean yourself, you're... these are going to be the social consequences. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. yeah. And uh, as long as she understands, like, the same thing with a beating as well. It's like you, you under, you have to understand why you did what you did and why it's wrong and and stuff like that. So as long as the child understands what they did wrong afterwards, they they usually uh, don't suffer from too much trauma and they usually correct their behavior uh, unless there's some like other. Uh, things going on like mental issues and stuff like that which is kind of what i'm kind of iffy on the the autism stuff but it you it can turn out well uh, if the mother didn't do any of that and just like left it be then sure that's that's not good parenting at all okay i just i just uh felt that cherry went a bit too hard and uh kind of made assumptions uh Although I do understand that the situation wasn't explained too well. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Um. Sorry, I didn't mean to just rant. I thought I was gonna bring up a question or something. Uh -oh. But you're making assumptions too, bitch. Yeah. No. Yeah. I know. I'm making assumptions too. But uh, just wholesale saying that someone's being a bad parent without understanding the whole situation is kind of like. And saying they're bad. not a bad parent is like uh. No, because, you know, she was 14, right? The the girl? And autistic. Yeah. Uh, that's... When you're... T uh, well, I had, I don't think I have to explain to you or anyone else that when you're autistic, you don't pick up on social cues as well as other people. So, so you think that, it's cool to just, like, let your daughter get humiliated because you don't know how to help an autistic child? Um, I don't think it's cool, but I don't think it's uh, the worst thing in the world. It's not the uh, worst. Okay, so you don't think that there's, like, an issue with kids in America and, like, mental health and depression and suicide and becoming school that, that's that, that goes into the thing I was saying earlier, that you have to explain, yeah, like, you ha uh, as long as you handle the situation afterwards properly, uh, usually the, there's no traumatic event after that. Usually. Where is that study from? Um... I don't have it on me right now. I haven't been to oh, school okay. in a long time, but <laughs> okay. Jeez, she just dipped. Yeah, that's fine. I understand. Uh, I think Cherry is actually a pretty cool person. I watch her stream sometimes, and I love how she treats her uh, viewers. Wow. But yeah, I, I guess that's all. Uh, keep keep uh, keeping it up, and I hope you finish this factory soon, because Jesus Christ. Shut the fuck up. It's coming along, okay?
<laughs> yeah, no, I know. It, it looks pretty. Thank you. See ya, man. Bye. Nick P. Bruh. Hello. What's up? Uh, I just wanted to talk to you about guns. Uh, I wanted to see what you have, what you like, and what you want to get. All I have is a Glock and a Mosin. Have you shot anything else? Yeah, I've shot a ton of things. Is there anything that you like in particular? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody wants like a fucking sick ass AR-15 build, right? It'd be fun to do one at some point, someday. Oh, and I've done a little bit of trap shooting. I have a sick ass shotgun that I haven't gotten to shoot yet because I'm fucking haven't found a trap shooting place in Florida. But nice. do you have uh, you have your eyes on anything in particular? Right now, no. Uh, right now, my eyes are set on finishing my factory. I feel it, brother. All right. Well, that's all I wanted to know. So have a good day. That's man. all you have. You just wanted to ask me three questions? That was really sus. Why do you want to know what I'm well, defending myself with and protecting myself with my house? That's all you want to ask? And Oh, well, yeah, also give me your address, too. Uh-huh, yeah. What do you, what, what, you must, there must be something else you wanted to say. Oh, no, I, well, I thought you were, I thought you probably had a, a bigger inventory of guns, and I thought you were a little bit more into them, but it doesn't sound like you are, so. I'm pretty into them. I just don't fucking have time. I'm building my factory right now, okay? I'm, build, I'm trying to build over here, okay? I hear you, brother. I hear you. It's okay. Listen, you have a good day, okay? Well, no. What time would you want to talk? I love guns. I fucking love guns. I want to do a sick ass AR-15 build. I want to get one of those Trijicon fucking five hundred fifty dollar red dot sights for my Glock seventeen. Uh, you know, I want to get more old ass fucking. I want to get one of those fucking. Uh, uh, um, uh, oh God, what were the M1 Garand so I can shoot my whole little internal clip and it goes ching. Like, yeah, I love guns. I love guns so much. They're so much fun. Well, I'm debating between if, if I want to do an AR-10 build. Right now, I've got an AR-15. What the I've fuck is an a, AR-10? Um, it's chambered in um, 302 or uh, 762. Or 308 or 762. It's pretty much an AR-15. 302, bro? 308 or 302, bro? Oh, so you're not into guns. You're just making fucking um, random shit up. Yeah, either that or a SIG... Um, 1911. I'm not sure. I'm kind of debating on this one. You kind of sound like a 1911 guy, you know? You don't know much about guns, but you want to pretend you do, so you uh, buy some yeah, dumbass, yeah, huge, yeah, honking yeah, piece yeah, of shit yeah, metal yeah, thing that, you know, jams yeah, yeah, every other yeah. time you go to the ring. Yeah, you know. So you know what? I fired, unironically, uh, the last time I went shooting, unironically, I had a, it was some HK pistol. Oh my god. Um, I know they're expensive, but fuck, I wish I could remember what I was. It was some 9mm HK pistol. That thing was the funnest. Th it was so smooth. Shot like Perfect. butter, okay? Um, I not not shot any HKs, but I've heard really good things about them. Yeah, um, I think there was a scar at that range too, which was also interested to fire. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think of all the guns that I've enjoyed firing, I think that my oh, Shave Dog Dogs, you're in chat. It was an HK VP9. That gun was amazing. Oh, nice. That was such a nice handgun. Holy shit. Um, I think one thing I've really gotten into. Have you ever um, shot trap or skeet? Uh, not in a long time, but yeah, I have. That is super fun. It's a whole different skill set. It's a really, 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 really fun. I need to find a range so I can take this. Um, I have this sick ass fucking shotgun. Um, it's like one of the over under barrels or whatever. I like that when you when you crank them down, the shells fly out the back and everything after you shot them. Those are cool. I like I like driving a manual car. I like guns with a lot of like manual action. I think um, single shot like bolt action, like my Mosin Nagant, and there are other bolt actions I've fired where you like you crank the. Um, Action back and then the round flies out of shit. Those are fun. I like that. That's enjoyable. I, re I really like. I have a, a Tika T three X Tech. It's really nice. Uh, it's a little expensive. It's a little bit more on the expensive side. Not too expensive, like a couple thousand bucks, but it's, it's shoots so well, man. I love that thing. Do you shoot that? Is that like? Do you shoot that standing up, or is that? Do you have like a stand for that, or? Uh, I just shoot at the range, outdoor range. Oh, okay. Um, really fun gun. Yeah. What else? Anything else you got that's, for me? That's it, man. Fuck you. Yeah. Nothing special. Okay. Well, well, fuck you too, buddy. Uh, what state are you in? Uh, I'm in California, so it's a little Ooh, difficult. Yikes. Really shitty restrictions. Have but, you ever shot um, any of the AR-15s at the ranges there? Uh, yeah, I have, I have my AR-15. Oof. Do you have one of those cucked-ass fucking quasi-pistol half-things on it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, no. So I had one. Are you talking about, like, the ones with the fin? Yeah, because you're you not can't... allowed to have like a true pistol grip or whatever on the things. Yes, it's, but I yeah. replaced it with, um, it's like, it's, I forgot what it's called, but it's almost like a pistol grip. It's like a uh, modified pistol grip where it's uh, tilted back a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's at an angle, so technically it's not a pistol grip, even though it pretty much is. So I repl that's what I've got on mine right now. Gotcha. But yeah, that's it, buddy. All right. Well, hey, have fun. Be careful, okay? All right. Have a good one. Noctuarium.
Hello. Hey. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Have we spoke before? Uh, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did. Wait, what was it about? Uh, a couple of things. It was a couple of weeks back. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay, wow. Um. That's an incriminating <laughs> answer. But okay, go for it. What's up? Uh, so you're one of the most reasonable people that I know. So Obviously. I just wanted a bit of advice. For sure. Yeah. What do you need? <laughs> All right. Don't get, don't get a big head. <laughs> I already do. Um, so <laughs> you, um, have some experience with ADHD, whether you have it, um, or I've heard you mention that Nathan has it. Yeah. Um, the ADHD God. What do you need? <laughs> well, um, that's kind of issues that I've been having at work. Um, and I'm wondering if you have similar things or how you've managed to, uh, you know, get a handle on it. Um, basically, the nature of the work that I do has people coming in like every couple of minutes and it's like super distracting and it's just really hard to sit down and focus um, when you have 100 people coming in for 100 different things and it just feels like my brain is actually separating when that happens. What, it, what can you um, give me? What is your job? <laughs> what is it my job? Um, I basically work for a medium sized company. Um, it's a warehouse, but I have my hands dipped in like admin and operations and accounts and a lot of different areas. Um, I also do like quality control and just a bunch of other stuff. Um, okay, so a lot of random tasks throughout the day, um, hard to control yourself. And you're asking me for tips on that? Like, yeah, basically, specifically, like, do you ever have a hard time refocusing on something that you have to do? And it's other stuff as well, like, well, I know you don't have an issue in this particular thing, which is people pleasing. Um, like I'll I'll work really long hours, but that's just because I like to throw myself into stuff, mm -hmm. um, especially if they're really interesting. So, you know, you will hyper focus and stuff like that. Are you not willing but to try like Adderall or something? Or I'm on Concerta. Is that an amphetamine? Um, I don't know what Concerta is. It's it's kind of like uh, Adderall, yeah. I think it's like a sister drug or whatever. Um, it's helped. But it's also kind of like, I don't have the patience for like normal social interactions. I never did. So I just throw myself into work and that's basically all I want to do. Like I come back home, I'll play like some games. Um, and it's not like family or friends don't want to hang out. It's the opposite. Like they're always inviting me out. They want to do stuff. My like social battery is so. It's like ten percent versus people's. Okay, I don't. 100%. Is this like an ADHD thing, or is this like an antisocial, or? Because uh, kind of sounds like you just don't want to hang out with people, which is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, but that kind of goes against your people pleasing thing. Well, uh, who says you have to be a people? Bro, hold on. First of all, I'm. In some ways, I'm a people pleaser, but like, I don't do anything. Okay, <laughs> I, like I stay home and fucking play games like it's pretty hard to get me out to do stuff it's not like i'm going out all the time yeah. or whatever. like if i don't i don't go out unless i want to yeah i don't know uh, mostly you... what i want advice on is the focusing thing to be honest like do you ever have a hard time focusing on things basically like when you're reading or when you're researching the topic or anything do you feel like you get distracted easily and stuff like that um, yeah, I can. Um, the thing that like centers me on everything is competition. Mm -hmm. If I feel like I'm in a competitive arena, then that mm -hmm. helps my focus a million times over. So if I have like a debate coming up or whatever, I can do an ungodly amount of research. If I'm working on like a manifesto, like I can focus really hard mm -hmm. on these things because I feel like these are like competitive things. Um, but just like in random shit, I don't know. It's pretty hard for me to stay focused on stuff like that. But what are you gonna do? Okay. That's fair enough. All right. Okay. That's all I wanted. Well, Thank you very much. Yeah, good luck. Be careful. Thanks. Bye. Bye.
Fuck it. I usurp. You're in. What's up? Yo, buddy. Hi. What's up? Not too much. How are you? Uh, dude. Um, I know your your chat doesn't give a shit about the um red pill stuff, but I, I was watching a fresh and fit video, going over the Andrew Tate shit, and I, I, I don't think they've ever had a relationship, ever. Wow. What a brave take. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Okay. But you know what? Yeah. Fuck it. It is a brave take. Well, I mean, I said this like verbatim yesterday. I think I ranted about this for like four minutes verbatim, but go ahead. Oh, you did? Well, yeah. I didn't watch it. All right. Well, whatever then. This is a fail. Well, that's, I mean, go ahead. Give us, you just wanted to say they haven't had a relationship based. Okay. No, honestly, hold on. You can't really tell me. Nope. I don't got none. I don't give a shit. I'll talk to you later. Peace, buddy. Bye. I love you. Christopher, whatever. What's up? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. How's it going? Okay, talk to me. Fantastic. Has anyone ever commented that you sound very different in Discord than on stream? Nope. Okay, you do. That's why I was like freaking out. Anyway, okay. I want you to explain to me, right? Just only to me. Ignore chat. Okay. How is Sneeko intelligent? Because I respect, I respect your opinion on Lav. I understand what you mean, right? She did good on that Chud panel and... Brittany seems to have like a same view as well, but I just, I can't see Sneeko and I don't know what he's, I don't uh, know. I just, I think when he's at his best, I think he has the ability to conceptualize like high level things um, and talk around like pretty complicated ideas. Um, he just, he has that capability and I don't think everybody does. Okay. Do you think that's like a, like a lucky one-off or like maybe you saw some like false positives or anything? Uh, I don't know. All of his early stuff was really insightful unless he had like help writing. All of it, I guess. Maybe somebody did it for him. Do you think maybe he's like he's lost it? He's gone. You know, he can't be. Um, I, like didn't, I think he he's suffering like a fuck ton of audience capture right now. Like he's getting like ultra rewarded for having the current opinions he does, which I think is like pretty dumb. Okay, I feel like he's uh, like he's like your worst nightmare, where it's like he'll wake up at like thirty five and realize that. He's kind of a yeah that he's idiot. completely <laughs> suffered from audience capture that everything he believes is just a result of like trying to toe the line to a certain audience yeah okay gotcha hmm. so it's just like the the ability to like form con complex concepts okay yeah and like talk around just... them understand them and stuff integrating new information stuff like that yeah but, I, but the problem is that like i don't think this has anything to do with like having the correct opinions on things. Like, I think there are people that are very good at doing this. Um, like I said, like Jordan Peters is a really good example. He's got probably some of the worst political opinions I've ever heard. Um, but I think he's still, he's a pretty smart guy. Sure, but, okay. But I guess, like, how is he doing that, like, now? Like, is he, is he, like, integrating, like, uh, Nazi I don't think ideology he's doing, or whatever? I don't, don't think he's doing much now. I think his brain is pretty rotted right now. I don't think he's doing much at all. Hmm. Okay, that's all. I have more, but they're not relevant. So, can you pull in a T one for me? Thank you. A T one. Yeah. Man of the people. Okay. Peace. Okay. Bye. No, I'm not going to. Okay. Two pro center going once. Okay. Oh. By the way, there was too much. Hello. You hear me? Oh yeah, you're so quiet. Come on, let's like seven million percent microphone boost. <laughs> chill, chill, chill. It's first time using Discord. Right? <laughs> okay, what's up? What do you got? Um, thanks for dragging me. Uh, let's see. I guess I had a few questions. Do you mind? Go for it. Okay. Uh, first one is related towards, like, Hassan and the, uh, um, interview you did with Lex Freedom. And, uh, I didn't really understand your criticism of him at the time, so I was hoping you could clarify. But, yeah, just for context, you said things like, you know, he, he's a progressive and it's, he's, a uh, you know his opinions are progressive and it's just very boring and he there's um, no like analysis like he's just like whatever the popular progressive opinion is at the time of something he's just going to give you that p opinion there's not going to be anything unique or ever like i'm never going there's no point in going to him for like media analysis like any analysis you get from him is just going to be like what do progressives all say right now and that's going to be exactly what he gives there's like nothing meaningful yeah, but you call something. yourself a progressive right i mean like is this is this Sure, but I've no, got a like, thought process to get you to where I am, why I believe certain things are true. 
right? His things are, are all going to come from like socialism or communism, and he doesn't really have much of an understanding of a lot of the stuff he talks about. He can just give you like the high level answer for what he's supposed to say, like what is the progressive answer for something. So, you're, so you're saying like he 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 kind of works backwards in a sense. Yeah, because they're ideologically driven, not like fundamentally driven or whatever. Okay, at it. Um, the second question I had was related towards uh, Mr. Girl. Um, I, I guess I was sort of curious because uh, you, you like um, when you sort of criticized him, you talked about how he's kind of like a you know rapist. And on that one example, he kind of talked about. Um, I was sort of curious because last year you heard the same thing, and I, that's not really the conclusion you came to. So I'm wondering, like, what, what changed? Um, even last year when I was analyzing this stuff, I think you can go through and you can watch. And I think I was saying, like, bro, like, if you do stuff like this, like, you can end up, like, a lot of people, like, because the you're, you're doing stuff in an incredibly, oh, my God. You're doing stuff in an incredibly um, haphazard manner. But, um... I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because he sold himself as a really empathetic person for a long periods of time. I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, you know, maybe maybe he does have a way to manage this all rightly. Um, but now after like getting to know better, seeing how manipulative he is, um, now in retrospect, I view those interactions a lot differently um, than the, I, I gave him a lot of benefit of the doubt initially. I don't give him any benefit now. Is that a good way to measure things? And I only ask because let's say I have a good engagement with him. I wouldn't be able to come to the same conclusion you do. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm wondering, how do we align there? Um, what do you mean, how do we align there? I mean, how you evaluate how, people like, is going to depend on your personal experience and the things you've seen from a person, right? That's just how it goes. Yeah, but shouldn't there be a way to you know, kind of objectively call someone, you know, they're this or they're that rather than, oh, based off my interactions and this, like, why can't we just take it by what he said earlier? Um, rather than, oh, you know, he's a good guy, but he also said this. Um, well, because it's, when he says something like, I was going to fuck her, and then she said no, but then she gave me a look. I mean, like, there are worlds where that could be, there are worlds where that couldn't be, but it's going to depend on how much I trust his ability to evaluate other people's mental states. And in the beginning, if I'm willing to give him a lot of, like, leeway there in terms of how he evaluates it, then they're, I'll probably lean on, meh, maybe it was okay. But if I learn later, like, okay, he's really bad at evaluating other people's mental states, then I'll probably like, okay, probably not okay. I don't know. I guess that just seems, like, based off how much you like someone or, you know, how much you dislike someone, you know, you can kind of go either way there. And, you know, the, the ramifications are pretty big. <laughs> I mean, how manipulative or how much of a bad person I think somebody is or not is going to depend, is going to influence how much I like or not like them. But I mean, like, that's kind of how it goes, right? Like, how, like, how much I know somebody is going to change a lot. Like, if somebody tells me, like, oh, yeah, like, um, I think my ex was a big piece of shit. Like, I think he was really controlling. Um, he didn't give me any privacy. Like, it was really annoying. I'm like, oh, okay, damn, maybe her ex was, like, pretty shitty. Um, but then let's say we start dating for a while and I find out that she's like cheating on me constantly. She wants to hide her phone all the time. She leaves at night and doesn't come back sometimes for a day or two. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Well, now when I look at that stuff, she's just out about her ex. I'm like, okay, well shit, maybe her ex wasn't controlling at all. Maybe she's fucking crazy. Maybe this girl is actually insane, right? I would start to change the way that I view the past thing she told me. And then by peripheral, you know, other people she's described as well, I'd probably start to change. But I don't think that, um, I don't think that's, it's not just a matter of just liking or not liking somebody, right? It's a matter of when you gain more information about somebody that might change the way you interpret prior statements they've said. Mm, okay. Um, I guess my last question is, uh, <laughs> who, who would you say are the, the stupidest orbiters? Damn, I'm not, I'm, first of all, even if I had a feeling about that, I would never say it, <laughs> but nice try. Hey, why though? You, you say a lot of edgy things. I just feel like... And you call yourself an asshole. I feel like it should be expected, right? Yeah, because I'm blunt, not because I'm fucking rude in that way. That I'm <laughs> you're, saying I, you're definitely rude, too. Come on. I don't think I would ever say, like, I think my here are people that come in, my friends that are stupid. But you would comment on other people's, like, you know, you have no idea who they are. and Yeah, no know. idea who they are is a lot different than making statements about acquaintances or friends. Yeah, but if it's given that you're an asshole, I don't understand, like, why... Not, like, I'm an asshole, but I wouldn't deal, like. Right? Yeah, but no, it is a big deal. It's really mean. Just because you're kind of an asshole doesn't mean you're like a full-on asshole. There's scales. There's levels to it. Like I can be like okay, a jerk but... to somebody, but I'm not gonna like go up to somebody's face and be like, "You're a fat." <laughs> like if it's a stranger or something, right? Well, I mean, like the like the girl who got like uh, was it or some shit? You just like oh, this is, and I'll admit, like obviously some of the things she's saying was 
stupid, but yeah, like, but this isn't like an acquaintance know. or a friend of mine. That's like coming into Discord. Yeah, but that, it's still pretty, you know. That's beyond the pale, right? Like that no, that's be... not. There are lots of things that are beyond the pale. That's not even close. No, okay. If that's not beyond the pale, then calling one of your friends stupid, I, I don't understand. Is like you don't have di- you don't say different things about different people. Like if I were to if you were to show me a picture, like and you would ask me, do you want to say if this girl's hot or not? And one is a picture of like my sister, and another picture is of a stranger girl. Like you don't think I would evaluate these two things differently? I'm gonna evaluate friends differently as I'd evaluate strangers on the internet differently as well, of course. Yeah, but we're we're just talking about like how rude and how nice you can be, and I mean. You know, I, I understand you're a nice guy. I just like, I, I'm surprised that you won't take a stance there. Like, what, what, be, and calling like, my friend stupid? What? Who do no, I think is the stupidest be, friend? It'd be honest advice and being like, um, you know, I think your opinions aren't that great, and you're just being blunt about it. And they should probably work harder, you know, developing better opinions. Okay, I'll think about Nothing that. Nothing wrong okay. with that, right? Uh, well, that's not what you asked before. You asked me to call someone stupid, not who do I think is the worst opinions or who do I disagree with the most. Okay, well, I'm just being, like, hyperbolic, like... You're not being hyperbolic. You're, you're, now you're asking something meaningfully different. Who do you disagree with the most is a lot different than who's your stupidest orbiter. Um, well, I guess it's part of the top process, like, their, their top process. So, so, I guess then, maybe tying it all together, then, who, who, which is the orbiter that has the least, you know, well-thought-out top process? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I would listen. I just don't think I would. I don't think I'm going to shit on my orbiters. Okay. I tried. <laughs> okay, All right, thanks, you. bud. Jesus. Anya Bella, what's up? Hello. Hello. Hey. I have a question for you. Okay, well, you've come to the right place because I'm the best person to answer questions about me. What's up? Perfect. So I was wondering if you think we should be concerned with the rate in which things are getting worse involving climate change? Um, I don't know. I read different things. I feel like, I think we're going to technology our way out of this one. That's my, yeah. That's where I currently stand on it. Yeah. But who knows? I might be wrong. Do you think that drastic problems like water rationing, for example, will happen in our lifetime? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think people will move around. Not even in like third world countries? Like, mm- it's already kind of happening in third world countries i guess but like less third world countries i don't think so but i mean who knows i could be wrong all right do you think you'll talk about it more or like do you think this is something that you might it doesn't drive a lot of like yeah it doesn't drive a lot of current policy right now i don't think we talk about it it's not part of like americans concerns about things and the conversations are very 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 broad uh, and far-reaching in terms of like, oh, like this is what the whole planet needs to do. So it's just not the type of policy I tend to enjoy talking about as much. Right. It has to be really individualized per country and stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. That's all I got. Okay. Have fun. I'll bomb now. 